in part one, chapters eight through 10 of man. In Leviathan, the most important intellectual virtue, according to Thomas Hobbes, is wit, an ability to think quickly and purposefully in such a way that leads to some achievement. He also discusses the qualities of good judgment, discretion, and fancy, which fall somewhere between creativity and imagination and meaning. Hobbes lists a series of possible accomplishments, writing poetry, chronicling the history, and preaching sermons, and explains how the qualities of judgment, discretion, and fancy need to be proportioned accordingly to achieve each one successfully. Those who exhibit too much fancy without proper judgment appear mad. Hobbes claims a person's passions are at the core of who they are, and that different life experiences, education, and physical compositions are the reason people's passions differ. Whenever an excess of passion is found, madness ensues, in the form of anger, melancholy, or giddiness. Hobbes devotes several pages to a discussion of madness with examples. Hobbes distinguishes two kinds of knowledge. Knowledge of fact is sense and the memory of what has been sensed, and he deems it absolute and history as the only subject that falls under this type of knowledge. Knowledge of the consequence is both science and philosophy, but all other fields of study fall under this category. Hobbes provides a chart itemizing all the various subject areas to prove his point. He then asserts that original powers are innate and instrumental powers are those obtained by putting the natural powers to use. The concepts of honor and value are not absolutes but depend on the need and judgment of others. Hobbes provides a long list of reasons why people have been esteemed or deemed worthy of honor and lists titles of honor in several different languages. Thomas Hobbes is uncomfortable with irrational thought and persistently intense emotions, human qualities he finds threatening to a stable social order. Hobbes' view of a commonwealth as the greatest of human powers is the bedrock of Leviathan. His attention to the concept of honor, titles, and worthiness of power in these chapters lays the groundwork for his insistence in part two that the ideal commonwealth has a monarch at its head.